We'll now talk about virtualization and containers, which has become a very important topic in the software engineering field, primarily because there's a lot of focus on it when it comes to cloud computing. But where did these ideas come from? Initially, what used to happen is when you used to write code, you would have a DevOps team or a finance team which would ask you which box do you want to buy for this code. So you would do something called capacity planning, which is basically a bunch of guesses. We have a video on this. You make a bunch of guesses and you tell that this is the amount of compute I need, this is the kind of memory I'll be requiring for this application, I'll be needing this much storage. Finally, you go to the shop and you buy a computer. Now, this is an investment, of course. You're buying a computer. So, let them come! If you buy a small computer, the problem is, what if your business scales? So, you went to the shop, you bought the computer, you made all that time and effort investment. And then what? Your business scaled and you need to do this all over again. So, what you want to do is, you don't want to buy a small computer because that investment doesn't make sense. You want to buy a large computer or a reasonably safe computer so that you don't need to do this again and again. But the problem with this is that the initial hardware investment is very large. If you wanted to horizontally scale just on the basis of hardware, you would need to buy as many computers as possible. So one of the approaches that organizations took was to let their employees use that single computer. But if you have multiple people using the same resource, there's going to be some contention. So you want to isolate resource usage as much as possible. The question was, can we do this for applications? Now let's get to the technical details. You have a program which requires a number of resources, which is usually memory, IO, processing and disk. So that's how you can think of your computer also. It's a bunch of these four resources which can be used for running your program. Obviously, the more programs you have, the more resources you need. But you also want to do some sort of boundary management, which means that A does not interfere with B's memory and C does not interfere with A's I.O. And that responsibility is going to be taken up by the operating system. So now the operating system is the sole manager of these resources. When you write a program, you talk to the operating system saying that through your interface, I'd like to book X amount of memory, Y amount of IO and so on. So you're seeing that this pink program over here with the interface is taking up some of the space in terms of resources. Similarly, you can have multiple programs which are going to be taking up slices of the resources that the operating system can provide and the remaining is going to be unused. The problem with this is that you can still have the same problems of shared compute where if the memory runs out because let's say yellow takes up all the memory, then everyone else is upset. What we would prefer to have is something like a very strong boundary, which is provided by something called virtual machines. And this concept is super interesting because the virtual machine is like an operating system in itself. So it's an operating system running on top of an operating system. Technically, you can have the blue box over here as a hypervisor. But let's assume that it's an operating system and you're running this on top of it. So it's like the matrix effect. The real world is being hidden from you and you can interact with this fake world that you have without concerning yourself of what other programs are running in the same hardware. You're now mainly concerned with the virtual machine that you have been assigned, which has been given a set of resources. This concept makes a new business model possible, which is called cloud computing. The basic idea is huge companies like Amazon and Google have a lot of hardware lying about. What they can do is take all of the spare hardware and rent it out to small businesses. For example, interview ready. I can go to Google or Amazon and say that, hey, please run my site. I'm going to pay you some rent money, but I'm not going to be making that big investment of maintenance and upfront cost of buying a computer. Like where am I going to place it? So that is the rent cost of placing the computer of maintaining that computer is taken care of. The other good thing is that my code doesn't need to be platform dependent. I can take a Windows computer and run Linux on top of it. So I have a 64 GB Windows computer. I can run, let's say four or five Linux computers on top of it. And my code doesn't need to know that deep down there is Windows running. The third thing is that this is very flexible. The provisioning of these resources is quite dynamic. 
all I need to do is shut down my virtual machine and restart a new machine. I don't need to go to the shop and buy a different computer. And amongst these three, I think platform independence is probably the game changer here. Because if you remember Java when it came as a language, so many people adopted it because you no longer had to take OS considerations. You could push that onto the ops team. You just needed the dot class file and you could run the program on any operating system. So this was a big deal because people could just go to these cloud providers and ask them for a virtual machine and they would get it very cheap. But one of the problems with a virtual machine is that when you're running a program, you don't want to start an entire virtual machine. It's like booting up your computer. It takes some time. It takes a few seconds. And then the idea came up that, hey, you just need processing power, memory, disk and IO, these four resources. Taking all this into consideration, there came something like lightweight OSs. They were a precursor for something called containers. Containers are effectively a form of virtualization. What they let you do is app isolation. You're not going to be having all the features of OS isolation, you know, virtual machines, but you don't really need that. And the benefit is that you just need to tear down and build this lightweight container. So that's faster when it comes to boot times. Interestingly, this process of building and teardown is called mounting and unmounting a disk. In school, if you guys worked on, you know, CDs and stuff, we would mount and unmount disks. That would be like a, like a virtual machine, which would be allowing you to read the contents of the disk. Similarly, in a container, you actually specify the operating system and, and your disk requirements. And then the mounting process figures out the file system, underlying file system, which you will be using through the interface of the container. So technologies like Docker have done the same thing that Java did for programming languages. It's a way for us to move all OS considerations back to the developer. The developer can actually specify that these are the resources I need. This is the operating system I'll be running on. And you don't need to worry about the hardware so much. Docker will handle that. It will create an interface which will be interacting with the hardware or the virtual machine, whatever be the case. It will create a container on top of it and let your program inter interact through the interface. When it needs more memory, it just asks and it gets it. So the advantages of using containers is clear, but the major disadvantage that I can see is that containers are also considered a little slow. There's also possible firewall issues which come up because you have containers, although it's much lesser in containers than a virtual machine in my personal experience. The overhead of container management is also not worth it really for simple applications, like places where you know that you don't need containers as such. So that's it for this containers video. It's a very brief introduction to what they are and why we use them. Of course, there's a lot more detail we can get into. If you'd like that, you can post them in the comments below or you can hit the like on this video. If you want notifications for further videos like this, you can hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.